Good morning, all. It'll be just us here this morning rather than the uh, online group because the storm last night, the internet is out. So this will be recorded and hopefully broadcast later, but we are not live. This morning, because of the horrible tragedy in Uvalde yesterday, we are going to use the mass for in time of war or civil disturbance, praying for peace and reconciliation and healing. And this morning's intention is for the repose of the soul of Dr. Robert Jerome Nelson. We begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, merciful and strong, who crush wars and cast down the proud, be pleased to banish violence swiftly from our midst and to wipe away all tears so that we may all truly deserve to be called your children. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After Paul's escorts had taken him to Athens, they came away with instructions for Silas, Silas and Timothy to join him as soon as possible. Then Paul stood up at the Areopagus and said, you Athenians, I see that in every respect you are very religious. For as I walked around looking carefully at your shrines, I even discovered an altar inscribed to an unknown God. What therefore you unknowingly worship, I proclaim to you, the God who made the world and all that is in it, the Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in sanctuaries made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands because he needs anything. Rather, it is he who gives to everyone life and breath and everything. He made from one the whole human race to dwell on the entire surface of the earth, and he fixed the ordered seasons and the boundaries of the regions so that people might seek God, even perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from any one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As even some of your poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since therefore we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the divinity is like an image fashioned from gold, silver, or stone by human art and imagination. God has overlooked the times of ignorance, but now he demands that all people everywhere repent because he has established a day on which he will judge the world with justice through a man he has appointed, and he has provided confirmation for all by raising him from the dead. When they heard about resurrection of the dead, some began to scoff, but others said, we should like to hear you on this some other time. And so Paul left them, but some did join him and became believers. Among them were Dionysius, a member of the court of the Areopagus, a woman named Damaris, and others with them. After this, he left Athens and went to Corinth. The word 
of the Lord. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all you his angels. Praise him, all you his hosts. Let the kings of the earth and all peoples, the princes and all the judges of the earth, young men too and maidens, old men and boys, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His majesty is above heaven and earth. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. He has lifted up the horn of his people. Be this his praise from all his faithful ones, from the children of Israel, the people close to him. Alleluia. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, I have much more to tell you, but you cannot bear it now. But when he comes, the Spirit of truth, he will guide you to all truth. He will not speak on his own, but he will speak what he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are coming. He will glorify me because he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. Everything that the Father has is mine. For this reason I told you that he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. We have a very interesting reading in the Acts of the Apostles. St. Paul goes to Athens, which was, of course, a very cosmopolitan city, very forward-thinking, very uh, intellectual-type kind of a place. And uh, Paul puts together a fantastic sermon, uh, quotes their... Uh, he compliments them, saying, I see you're very religious. He quotes their... Pro uh, poets, uh, very well structured, and the result is it's a big flop, you know. So as it says, when they heard about resurrection from the dead, some began to scoff, but others, those who were more polite, said, we should like to hear you about this some other time. So basically writing Paul off. So Paul from this experience then changes his approach and says, I preach Christ crucified, and that's it and uh, doesn't try and wow them with all this kind of stuff. So our faith is not based on intellectual arguments or dazzling homilies or wonderful speeches, but rather on the gift of faith. Jesus tells us, but when he comes, the spirit of truth, he will guide you to all truth. It's the gift of the Holy Spirit that really enlivens or initiates our faith. Study and... Um, Understanding of it is very, very helpful, but that's not the real basis. It's the gift of the Holy Spirit that brings us to faith in God's Son, Jesus, that God has risen from the dead in Jesus and conquered sin and death. We see uh, so many terrible things around us in uh, Ukraine, in Uvalde yesterday, sometimes in our own lives. But we believe in the power of God's spirit to overcome even these terrible, terrible tragedies. That God will work through his son Jesus and the Holy Spirit to raise us up and conquer all these things of sin and death. Let us pray. Let us pray for ourselves for an openness to the increase in faith 
the gift of the Holy Spirit, to know God's love in Jesus more intimately, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For friends and relatives who are sick or hurting in any way, they may experience the Lord's healing power and comfort, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those we know and love and care about who seem not to have heard the Holy Spirit, they will be open to the gifts God wants to give them, we pray to the Lord. For the repose of the souls of those killed yesterday in Uvalde, for healing and comfort for their families and friends and for that whole community, for an end to gun violence in our country, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in our world, especially in Ukraine, for peace in our own cities, in our own homes, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the special needs and prayers and intentions we bring with us this morning. For the prayers that remain silent in our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, you reveal your love through your Son, Jesus. Hear the prayers we make in his name, who lives and reigns with you forever. Amen. Amen.